Welcome to the ATB Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. G'day, mate. How are you, mate? Good. ADHD. Yes. We are... What's changed, Steve? We've done oh. some podcasts on ADHD before. The lovely thing about science is that we learn more. It's constantly not evolving but more discovering. We're understanding more and more about the human human body, the human mm. mind. Um, ADHD, Steve. Incredible. It affects one in 20 people. Now, when I say people, I mean children and adults. Now, is that as of today? Has that always been the way? Has the instances of ADHD increased? or um, And what's the argument that it has always been one in 20, but we've only now just been able to have the tools to diagnose it? It's incredible. I mean, you're right. I mean, has it been there since when I went to school? Um, you know, I don't remember anyone being on amphetamines for medication for ADHD. Now, now these medications have only been around since 1937. So they're relatively, well, I suppose not new anymore, 1937 all the time. Not new, but, not, not, new, not new for me, Steve, maybe new for you. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but but has it been around a lot longer? It's a really good question because, mm. you know, it, there are genetic bases to it. There are environmental factors like pretty much most of the diseases and the diagnosis for ADHD has changed. So like in 84, it changed from ADD to AD. HD yeah. and added the hyperactivity. Hyper. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a whole list of criteria for it. And and the, the one we go on is is what they call the DSM five manual. DSM. Yeah, Diagnostic Statistical Manual. And it's all mental health criteria. So what is ADHD is what the DSM says it is. Right. So that's that's sort of what it is. Do and we agree with that, by the way? Do we agree with the DSM? No, not always. Okay. Um, they, for example, they they took out um one of my big beasts was in from the four to five, they took out food addiction. Okay. as being a mental health thing because they thought it was a physical addiction. Wow. And I thought, no, no, food addiction is a real thing. Yeah. And so a lot of the psychologists said, no, food addiction is now no longer a thing. So from an overnight printing of it, it dropped out as being a thing. So I don't agree with that. Okay. I think people can be addicted to foods. Okay. And, um, you know, there's certain st studies with dopamine. We're going to talk a lot about dopamine in the brain today and about yeah. the reinforcement of that. So, yeah, I mean, but the criteria for, for ADHD is, is really interesting. But the, but the problem is you've got to have six or more of these symptoms and six or more of these symptoms. And it's the list is, you know, I'm just holding up the camera quickly here for those who are listening, but it just goes on forever. So I'll read so, out a few. So, so what, when you say you've got to have this and that, are they making the bar to be um, um, uh, diagnosed with ADHD? higher than what it used to be. Yes, a little bit higher. That's interesting. Yeah, go mm. on. Because more kids are, you know, it, it, ADD, almost every child at school would have had ADD, the old diagnosis. But Attention now, deficit disorder, disorder. Especially with your boring teachers or the subjects you didn't like. Correct. Right? I mean, yeah. you know, attention deficit disorder was someone who just couldn't concentrate in class, which yeah. was hello me. Yeah. You know, you start learning about Shakespeare and I was like, <laughs> you know, nodding off and I couldn't uh, concentrate. To suffer the slings and arrows of misfortune, Steve. I'm sure that's a Shakespeare it quote, is. is it? It is, yes. <laughs> I actually- Out got, damn spot. Well, that's what I say to Biscuit. And he's like, Out <laughs> damn spot. <laughs> I quote Macbeth all the time. Right? Well, I, the, the thing I did in year 12 English, which made me almost fail year 12 English, was Macbeth. Really? And I had to read in class some of it, and this was part of the assessment. And I was reading it out, and of course, it's who not, what thou, this, that, that, that. And I, I old got, English? Yeah, old English, and I never this learned is the that. the problem, Steve. If you hadn't been a heathen, yeah. and actually back in those days read your King James Bible, <laughs> yes. thou with, thus stinketh. You know, <laughs> like, you know, I love that scripture actually in the Bible. It's great. <laughs> you know, thou, thou thus stinketh. Yeah, anyway, but yes, I understand. Understand your yeah. feeble mind. Yeah, I know. So yeah. I used to get kicked out of class for reading it stupidly because I didn't understand. Because because I went to a trade school. We learned science and maths. And then you I, went to a trade school. I went to a trade school, Moorabbin Technical College, and it was a technical college. So we didn't actually have English. We had humanities, oh. which was report writing and that sort of stuff. It wasn't <laughs> English. So, oh, okay. But, and then oh, the last but, couple of years, I had to do English. T t Tony is incredibly smart. Yeah, like she studied yes. genetic engineering mm. at, at at uni. She finished six months short of her degree, which is hilarious, right? Because she decided she didn't want to continue to go. Um, she is very good at math. So is my son, mm. Clayton, just straight A's in math. Don't even try it. Pisses me off. And I did maths and society instead of maths one and two, right? Yeah. <laughs> which she calls <laughs> math in the beer garden. Yeah. I, I'm like, no, no. At the no, I said that wasn't actually the bottom math. <laughs> I went to Springwood State High, yeah, right. Which is, which is, I mean, it's probably great now. And for all yeah. my fellow yep. Springwood yep. State High people, you yep. know, power to you. But mm -hmm. we had maths for living, right? <laughs> which that? is, I think they invented <laughs> because the the standard was <laughs> so living. was so low, yeah, that even the top brainiac, you know, the kid that had the big brain at school, yeah, he he didn't get the top. ATAR, back then it was called TE. We were the last yeah. year that did TE scores, right? Yeah. 
which was like 990, which means that you're in the top 1%. Right. We didn't even get a, a top 1% in our school, even though the guy got straight A's because of the way that it worked. Yeah, so we had some – some some yeah, so maths in the beer garden was about counting your beer tokens, right? I mean, like that's how bad it was. So, Steve, it sounds like you had the equivalent that of English. Oh, absolutely. In my trade school, and then I had to go to a high school in English, and it's still relatively easy, but I had no idea about it. How did you work out the smart then? you just good with chemistry and, and – Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I did chemistry, physics, biology, maths – and English, and that was my HSE. Right. So the four of the five subjects I kicked ass, the fifth one I got 52 in English. Well, you speak well now. Oh. Like, I can understand you. Uh, yeah, I speak all right, but, um, you know, I'm still a yobbo, was he? And, and this Shakespeare stuff was incredibly difficult for me to focus on. I, I couldn't – I remember I remember we, we watched the film after reading the book, and I didn't even realise there was – because they kept saying Macbeth, <laughs> Lady, and then Lady Macbeth, and I'm going – and I said, Miss, is, is Macbeth a man or a woman? And I got kicked out for asking that question. <laughs> I didn't know there were two characters. I honestly didn't oh, know. I, love it. I didn't great. know. And I'm going, Lady, is it a man or a woman, this Macbeth character? I had no idea. Macbeth is a, is, a, is a girl's name. Yeah, well, well. it was Macbeth. And, I, and then I did. And then he watched the movie, and then it was, oh, and it all made sense to me after watching the movie. But I couldn't understand the book. The one, the one that they did in the 90s, I think it was actually 1991, we had um, the, the, mo- the modern version, which was way better. I think they had um, uh, the Australian actor, I think it had um, oh. Lethal Weapon. Uh, Mel, oh, Gibson. Mel Gibson. I think it had Mel Gibson in it. Yeah. I think it did, if yeah. I remember correctly. Okay. And it was really cool because right. it was like, okay, Macbeth now becomes cool. And then, of course, DiCaprio did um, uh, uh, Romeo, Romeo and Juliet, Juliet yep. which was bloody awesome. Yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, anyway. All right. And so so it's all about focus. But now the the, the criteria is, is, is a lot different. It's like, for example, one of them is often fails to give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes in schoolwork and work and with other activities. So, for example, they may – you know, forgot forget to um, you know do half an exam and walk out or lose focus on that sort of thing. Uh, they have trouble holding tasks. They don't follow through on instructions. So they have to tell them ten times to mm. pick up their clothes. That was me. Mm. Um, you know, trouble with organisation of their own tasks. So they're mm. always late mm-hmm. to school and all mm. this sort of stuff. Again, it just sounds like it everybody. sounds like a, a, actually t- yeah. this morning in my house with my two boys. <laughs> so like, you know, like seriously, <laughs> they were supposed to get their own breakfast this morning. They couldn't even do that. Yep. So well, uh, you know, yeah. milk and cereal. There. No, 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 too difficult for them. Didn't yeah. even get their own water bottle today, so they went without water to school. Are they often easily distracted? Yes. And forgetful in daily yes. activities? Oh, geez. Yeah. All right. I think you're talking about half of the world's population, by I, the way. I think I you're pretty much describing men. I am. And, and you guys got to have six of those. And then the hyperactivity bit is you've got to have, they often fidget or tap or squirms in their seat. Oh, my seat. gosh. Clayton doesn't stop it. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. You're describing you're naming him. Yeah. All right. Does he run about a climb in situations where it's not appropriate? Does he Does he what? Does he run around when situations that aren't appropriate? Like, does he just, you know? No, he no, doesn't do that. Good, no. good. Okay, well, there you go. Yep. Um, leave seats while expected to be seated. So all He these... leaves his seat up all the time. Like, okay, oh, so that... it's like, can you mop that up? Like, seriously, oh, it's like, no. just get a freaking hose. Yeah. I might as well just, you know, it should tile everything. There shouldn't be anything that, that can't be watered or hosed down in the toilet. It's just go, what's, like, how do you, uh, anyway. Oh, I've met him a few times, and he doesn't talk excessively. No, uh, uh, yes, good. he does actually. Oh, yes, okay, really? Yeah, he does. Clayton, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. There you go. Um, often unable. I've to got talk. something really interesting on that. What's that? There was a theory put forward, Steve, and I want yeah. to look into this. That with 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 men and women, mm-hmm. specifically women that talk a lot. Do they? That that sign? No, no, no. The, the, whoever they are, like <laughs> yeah. if you've got big talkers that just won't stop talking. Mm-hmm. That the size of the brain that that. That governs speech, speech yeah. is bigger in women than what it is in men typically. Yes. Which means that, and I think the average amount of words for men in a day is eighty thousand. I think women's one twenty or something like that. Don't quote wow. me, right? Like, but yeah. it's there's that sort of ratio disparagement. Mm-hmm. But the larger the vocabulary is, the number of people that people. Have you met, ever met those women and or men that just will not shut up, just a million miles an hour? Apparently, apparently, yeah. that's directly related to. The, the more that they talk, the less sex drive they have. Oh, oh God, I don't know about that. I've, I've, I have to now. I have to think. Right. I have to think. I mean, I, I'm married now, so that's all. I want to know if that's an urban myth or if that's true. Yeah, that's it. All right, well, we'll come the, back. the larger area, the speech areas of the brain, there's two main areas: is Wernicke's area and Broca's area, mm-hmm. um, and they become diseased. And, and if they become diseased, you get Wernicke's aphasia and Broca's aphasia. And I won't go into that here, but. It's when you talk and you just simply forget a word. Like, for example, today we're talking about ADHD, and you can't say D. 
you know, that sort of thing. You, you forget those words. That, that's brachiosophagia. And what does word, that mean? Oh, that means I do got, that all the time. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't even remember Mel Gibson like five minutes ago. Oh, no, that, that's different. It's, it's like they – and, and, and Wernicke's aphasia is a bit different, but it means that you just simply can't finish a sentence. And, and they, they know what they're saying, but they just – and it often occurs when you have a stroke in that area of the brain. Mm. That's one way to diagnose what part of the cerebral cortex is affected mm. in a stroke. Very interesting. So, so yeah, so speech. Yeah. But I don't know about speech and sex drive. That's really interesting. Let's look it up. Anyway, Absolutely. So let's keep going with ADHD. Well, speaking of sex drive, mm. um, there is something that occurs in a mother – that can increase the risk of a child being born with ADHD. Oh, really? Yep, and that is to do with their sex drive and it has if they have high testosterone levels. Right. And we now know there's a study come out um, in 2013, this was a quite a, an older study, but it said that prenatal exposure to testosterone may increase the risk for early ADHD and there was particularly more prevalent in women. Are you talking things like hirsutism, that sort of thing? Yes. Right. So, so this is the ovarian syndrome. Yeah, so if a woman does have that, they are at higher risk of developing a child with, with autism. Wow. Now, and what, what do they have the statistical like increase? Sure. Um, there are oh, the statistical increase. Um, no, it's just percentage. Yeah. 64%, 72%. So 64%. Yeah. It, it, that, but that's, that's not a massive increase. For example, if, if you've got 5% chance of having an ADHD child, that might be, you know, 64%. Right, right, right. So it's, might, it's 64% higher than 5%. So you might be looking at maybe like 7%. 7%. Like that. So an extra yeah. 2%. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's All it's right. not a massive one, but it's still a big one. That's a, a significant one. factor, yeah. And you can measure this by measuring the, the, the second and fourth finger. If you've got more testosterone, the the, the fourth finger is Everyone's higher. Everyone's looking at their hands, yeah, I know, I know. And so you, you've, and with women, if their pointer is lower than their fourth finger, that is an indicator, and that's what this paper wow. says. So men, if you can see, like for those who are looking at my hand if reading, you can see my fourth finger because I've got more testosterone dominance. Oh, look at that, Steve. Yeah, you're testosterone dominant. Yeah. Hey. Well, you're supposed to be. Good. We're supposed to be. <laughs> but, but, but if we were to have children, Jeff, because yeah. men can have children nowadays. Um, oh, I'm not going there, Steve. Anyway, you can go there on your own. I was just trying to bait you. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> um, fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> because testosterone does shrink parts of the brain, unfortunately. And that's why men have a smaller corpus callosum. And what is that responsible for? Oh, if you, you know a brain's got a left and right side. I'm hemisphere, holding my hands. Yeah, 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 hemisphere. And the bit that joins is the corpus callosum. Yeah. Testosterone shrinks that. And that's why men have, have uh, uh, are not as good at women as multitasking. Ah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good thing to know. Well, it is, except there's a bit of a problem with shrinking that part of the brain. That is that, that men... Um, our boys are more at higher risk of ADHD. Right. But, I mean, the way I look at it is that you're then, you know, focused on one task, right? And you yeah. did one thing. But, yeah, that, I, I, we always talk about, you know, that. That's funny. Everyone's checking out their hands in the room. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, anyway, go. I've got the, by the way, if you ever want these papers, um, you know, just let us know because I've got that paper Can on we put the, the links to them on the, yep. Yeah, oh, we do. Good. Yeah, yeah. This is the, uh, the the right second fourth digit study. So if you want to ask about that one, anyway. So that's a prenatal right. testosterone. Right. So so there is a, a hormonal link anyway. Um, and, and we know boys get more ADHD by a ratio of, it depends on the study you read, three to six to one. So there's about let's just say of every ADHD woman or child, women, girl, there's about four or five men that have, or boys that have ADHD. Right. And I'm saying boys and men because it continues into adulthood. And right. this is something new. We always used to think ADHD is just a kid thing. But as an adult, you uh, develop better coping mechanisms for your life. I was life. going to say, how does, it, how does it manifest? Sure. Well, well, as an adult, adults tend to manifest a lot less because they tend to go into an area of their life where they enjoy and they're good at so they don't get distracted easy. Mm. So I'm going to talk about hyper-focusing later, which is what ADHD kids do. Right. And the hyper-focus, for example, they, they have the ability to, to watch television or play computer games for hours. So how does that, which is, again, we're talking about serotonin dopamine, that's yep. a huge, high levels of concentration for prolonged periods of time absolutely mess around with the serotonin slash dopamine absolutely sort of, you know aspects mm. um, of the brain yeah I, was, I forgot what i was going to ask no that's all right we're, we're going to talk about serotonin dopamine and I might have adhd <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that's terrible uh, i could just be under a lot of stress i mean maybe that's the other thing as well, well, well there is one blood test that's been identified to measure whether you're at a higher risk of adhd okay and that is to measure your dhea levels 
Yeah, it's dehydrating amazing. Dehydrating pH, yeah. it's so yeah. good for your eye. It's very good for you. And for men and women. And if you're low in it, you've got a much higher risk of developing ADHD. Mm. And that's in boys and girls. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, they looked at all the hormones in, in this particular study and they said, okay, let's look at testosterone because it's, you know, men get more ADHD, so that's a likely outcome. But they found it was just low DHEA leads to ADHD. And what helps with the production of DHEA in the body, Steve? Uh, lowering cortisol levels. Right. Because DHEA is made from cholesterol, like most of your hormones, yeah. and it has a, a constant battle between cortisol and being um, and DHEA. So what they found in this study, and that, that it, it's in, published in Psychoneuroendocrinology, so it's quite a, you know, they, they talk about psycholog- psychology of it, is that a lot of these and in this case, boys, um, were stressed out because they were getting told off a lot and not performing very well because they have ADHD. And so if they're getting in trouble a lot, they're getting stressed a lot. And so it depletes their DHEA. So I don't know whether it, the DHEA caused the, the ADHD or the fact that it was a result of ADHD. It's almost like a, a reinforcing negative behavior loop. Correct, right? yeah. Because, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Kids are being naughty, so then they get told off, so yeah. they feel bad, so yeah. then they produce less DHEA, so then they manifest more of the symptoms. Correct. And, and we know that additionally several studies have revealed that DHEA is negatively correlated with the clinical severity. So the more severe you are, the less DHEA you've got. It's really funny. Corbin's got some strange issues going on, right? Um, he, he's very talented footballer. Actually, got you know offers from two clubs to go into a, a special academy. Whoa, okay, yeah. Jeez. And, and and he's and he's uh, and he's and he's taking that on. But his inability when he does something wrong because he's a perfectionist, mm. he feels like he's letting the team down. He wow. can't process it. Yeah. And it's funny because I was talking to him the other day about because um, like, Corbin, get back in there, support your team, you know, yeah. all the rest of it, right? And he just has a processing issue with it. And I said to him the other day, I said, you know what? Even if you're in trouble, it doesn't mean that I don't love you. And I remembered what, I think it was Sam, and it was that reinforcement. Mm -hmm. And punishment should always come from a point of love and correction as opposed to anger and frustration. And hugging, Steve, physical contact, you know, those kind words. You can see that if you want to try and get through to someone, especially young boys and young Mm -hmm. kids, you know, that it's that kindness with correction as opposed to that out of frustration and anger. Right. And that's the thing I need to, I, I catch myself on as well too, because they'll do something stupid and I'll be like, Rah! and listening to that just makes me think, hang on a minute. Yeah. I could actually be making the situation worse yeah. out of frustration and anger as mm-hmm. opposed to kindness, caring, and love. And that's where you've just got to slow down. My father was really good at this. He used to send me to my room <laughs> and he used to cool down before he would come and sit down on the bed and talk to me before he, I'd get the, the <sighs> discipline. How good is that? That's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Now, I'm not a parent, but that, I'm getting great tips here. Yeah. Mm, you know. So that, that's an interesting. I found that study very interesting because the, the, mm. the more you read about it, it's like very interesting. They, they, they say, they gave me the, the data, actually. It says 3 to 7% ADHD prevalence among school aged children and the ratios of two to one to nine to one. Um, so in other words, there's, I just say five to one is the middle number. There's five boys to one girl. So it could be two or nine to one, but I just say five in the middle of it. So it's definitely a male orientated disease. Mm. So very interesting. And low DHA. That, and is that, that to do with the, the, the brain structure Yeah, more than the, anything else? Yes. And, and the, the studies go in to say that weirdly, and, and I don't know, you know, I'm not, so I did six months of psychology, but the schooling... Six months more than I've done. Yeah, that. it's pretty pathetic. But the schooling system seems to be set up, um, not, not, not to be sexist, but, but women tend to do better in schooling I've and academia yeah. uh, because uh, uh, the boys, you know, you know you've got to remember that boys and girls are different, okay? Are we allowed to say that? <laughs> I don't know anymore, but let's say they are, just for argument's sake, that they're different. But yet I don't they're think ed- you're to say that. Oh, story. probably not. But but they're educated identically the same way. So if there's if there's a difference between them, then educating them the same way. Oh. <laughs> just like, let's just everybody's fine. There's no problems. No problems. It's just you are who you are. Exactly. Just- exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> oh God. I might need it. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Mm. But but they did look at um, um, with with kids with ADHD and intelligence and IQ levels, yeah. And this was very controversial, mm-hmm. okay, because kids with ADHD are very good at some things, but overall they struggle right. with the way that you measure IQ, which is academic, and you do tests to measure IQ. And ADHD 
children suffer with that. So they will have a tend to have a lower IQ. I would be fascinated, Steve. Yeah. Because I'm a huge believer in play based learning, specifically mm. for for well for all children mm. and specifically boys up until the age of seven. Right. Now I would love to know if there's been any studies yeah. on children, specifically boys with ADHD, that have gone through the Montessori system. Wow. I don't even know what the Montessori system is. Montessori system, and it's really funny because actually if you jump onto their website and have a look, yeah. I think they boast so many CEOs and thought leaders and you know entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and you know artists and successful people in their field. It's not all about capitalism, mm-hmm. but in terms of being successful, life mm-hmm. choices where mm-hmm. they feel like they've, they've, they've really – Performing at their best, whatever that looks like. And, and the Montessori system is effectively no structured learning mm-hmm. in terms of classroom type learning until the age of seven. Right. Um, I believe. Now, I think in Australia, I think Montessori, I think you can go up to, I forget exactly, I think it's maybe kindergarten or something. Okay. And and it's just all about playing, all yeah. about learning, all mm-hmm. about through 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 doing, as opposed to I remember Corbin got anxiety, and again, poor little Corbin mm. um, got anxiety, and uh, when he went into prep, they were doing full on charts and mm. like I, I, he was bringing home homework and prep, just like, homework. I'm not kidding. I'm just like what, what in the world? And, and there is a difference between between um, knowledge and wisdom. Yeah. There's a difference between um, knowledge and a well-rounded personality. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not that knowledge isn't important, very important, but imagination is Einstein said is far more important than knowledge. Yeah. And this is the problem I think is that we're we're failing to allow children to develop, especially in these very early years, in a natural way. Mm-hmm. Up until the age of twenty five, Steve, I think the brain is still developing, especially in men, isn't it? Absolutely it is. So 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 these years, and I think this is what we need to actually go back and look at physiological aspects, as you're saying, I think mm-hmm. there are some things that we need to take into consideration. Sweden, I think, has which uses no homework, and I don't think they start school until seven in Sweden. Oh, really? Uh, it's one of the Scandinavian countries, oh. and again, I, I could be missing up my facts here, but they have a higher level of tertiary um, degrees mm-hmm. than the United States and Australia. Wow. They, they, they have they have higher academia because they uh, that. This is the problem, I think, if you try and force everybody to learn in a certain structured way. Now, I appreciate, you know, you've got to have structure and all the rest of it, but one size does not fit all. Mm. Um, anyway, and, and I'm getting a little bit off here, but I, I just I, – kids need to be kids. Yeah. They need to play. They need to learn, yeah. you know, and, and I don't. I think they're, they're just getting forced into a sort of a very rigid, tight structure, which I don't think is good for them, to be honest. It, true. I mean, I remember the early days in year 10 when I was learning chemistry and, and I wanted to become a chemist after this chemistry teacher had this such effect on me about play. He'd come into class and he'd say very little. And like one, one time he came in and lit a Bunsen burner and he said, can I make water from um, this fire? And everyone, oh, yeah, he said, I'm going to make water from this fire. And we're all going, what are you talking about? And he goes, hmm. so he, he got a, a glass like a pane of glass, you know, in the, in the game. And he held it up above the flame and it was cooled glass and, you know, it's above the flame. And it came down and said, and there was condensation on it. And I said, see, made water from fire. How did I do that? And we'd have to sit there and work it out. Yeah, right. And that was one of the, the things he did. Yes. And, right. and we now know that when hydrocarbons burn in oxygen, they produce carbon dioxide and water. Well, of course we do. Of course we do. And, you know, if, yeah. if, 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 if you want to be a scientist, look look at the cars driving, you'll see the stuff drop, dripping out the back of the exhaust. That's water yeah. from the hydrogen. And, but he did have this thing, like he had this, this, this flask of clear liquid. And he said, we're going to learn about rust today. And he'd have a couple of beakers there and he'd get a piece of metal, put it in there and put the water in there and nothing had happened, just sit there. We're gonna, and he said, oh, I've got another bit of metal here. And he put this metal in there and it fizzed oh, up, accident. fizzed up, fizz, 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 fizz. And, and he said, and, and he, he had this liquid here and he said, now you've got to be careful this liquid, but um, who wants me to drink it? And we're going, oh, <laughs> yeah, drink it. And, of course, he goes, no, 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 I'm joking. Yeah. All right, all right. And so he put a glass and he drank it. What was it? Water. Oh. Because it was the metals. It was ah, all, all about, sorry, sorry, got you, got you. He used iron, which is going to rust over years, yeah. and then he used sodium, yeah. which he uh, instantly it rusts. A, a, aluminium, so, sodium, aluminium? No, like, just aluminium, sodium, the, the, metal, uh, the oh. metal sodium. Wow. And when you put sodium in water, it fizzes and then explodes. Oh. Yeah, because he said it's all about, you know, persp- he taught us about the, the perspective of science and how you look at it. And, it, it, you know, the water was just water you got out of the tap. Mm. So, so it's all about how you learn that sort of thing. And, and so, so, you know, there's a study here showing um, – 
um, that, that, that they do have lower scores of, of IQ. And that doesn't mean if your child's got ADHD that he has a low IQ. It just means no. the way they measure it. No. And is... I've heard the other opposite as well too. Yeah, Asperger's of kids and all the rest of it, the, the next evolutionary step. Yeah. No. No. I mean, I, I appreciate, you know, that that <laughs> you don't measure everything through in- intelligence and mm-hmm. through knowledge. As I said before, I mean, Asperger's kids are incredible. I mean, yeah. that they become fixated on a certain thing and then want to learn everything they can about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right? Uh, which, again, is, is pretty incredible. I mean, some of these kids are – savant level at certain things. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might be insects or it might be bodybuilding or it might be, yeah, I mean, like, depending on what they, Correct. it's almost like imprinting, right? You know, yeah. when an animal sees something, this is where you've got like ducks that imprint on a person and all of us. And I saw this one with this goose, which was really funny actually, yeah. which was really cool. But um, once that, that's the same thing. They sort of get into one channel and then that becomes all mm. encompassing and all that they think about. And so they become incredibly, artisan adept mm. at that one subject but there's emotional um you know i mean again we're not a one-dimensional being you know Correct. We've, we've got relationship yeah. issues we've got um you know knowledge there's wisdom there's there's a whole a whole host of things that makes us human i guess um and, and it's 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 difficult i think for a lot of these people to you know integrate in society yeah and, and in school, in let's say primary school or even lower in high school when the ADHD is there, they, they have to, you know, learn about reading, writing, science, maths, English, and all, and all the subjects. They have to so, – so if they're really good at one thing, it doesn't, the school doesn't suit that. They say, no, no, you've got to work more on your English. Mm. And so it doesn't encourage that, that greatness in that one area because it's only primary school. You should learn a bit of everything. So well, and, and, again, I, I like the idea of learning a bit of everything as you get older and then really specialising in one yeah. area. See, and that's what most people do, right? They do. And typically, we should be focused on the things that we really love as yes. opposed to, oh, well, you should do this and become a doctor because it's lots of money. Mm. It's like, oh, yeah, I know. It, it, it's great to be good at one area of, of life because it, it, you can become, you know, I, I think, but with a balance first. Yes. And that's the problem, right? Because yeah, and that's that, the problem. If you don't have that foundation, mm. then you can yeah, then you can focus. Exactly. And and if you're really great at one thing at, at primary school, you'll probably still struggle big time. Because, you know, if you're great at English, let's say, of spelling, that's great. You'll get A on English, but you'll get an F in maths. Mm. Even your maths. <laughs> well, Steve, I've got a calculator. Got As I said, I mean, we've oh, said it before. A calculator now. Oh, you're not going to carry a calculator around in your pocket, are you, doidge? Yeah. Yeah. Up yours, teacher. Well, it's true. I, I mean, I remember doing the long term. I mean, I've never, you know, some of the maths you learn, algebra. I mean, I work in the field of science and, and a lot of it you don't need. I certainly haven't needed Shakespeare in my life. You know, I haven't ever been. Well, you're all the poorer for it, Steve. <laughs> Probably. I mean, algebra, I thought, was somewhere in, in Europe, but um, apparently it's <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but but yeah, you know, I remember I kicked out of class because when I went to a trade school and we learned trade, and I'm useless to trade now, but we learned about you know certain joins and certain solving techniques. And the, the the classic question you were encouraged to ask is, when would you use this? You know, in your in your oh, you use this when you're solving aluminium with aluminium, or you do this join when you're doing a, a house corner or something like that. So I got into Shakespeare in year eleven and year twelve, and they said, oh, when did we use this stuff? And I got kicked out again. <laughs> I was being a smart ass. No wonder you didn't learn anything, Steve. Oh, Sounds like you're good. at the principal's office. I was I probably more than half the classes I was kicked out of. I got zero out of twenty for one. I had to write a, an essay on this one page and you read it and I'm going, oh, I don't know, oh, I don't know, there's some words or yeah, zero out of twenty. I missed the point completely. You know, I got held back and you know, why do you why are you like this? It's like I don't know, I just don't understand it. I learn English and now this is different to me. <laughs> I just had no idea. And and, and I, I really got, you know, I was only six, 17 or something at the time. So I was just like, this frustrates the shit out of me. Yeah. Why do I, need, I don't need to know. Well, look at this now, Steve. You're, you're semi-retired. You've yeah. got all your houses. You, yeah. You know, I'm Chicken coming to you for lines. So. Did, did, didn't need Shakespeare after no, all. No, he didn't. <laughs> Bloody Shakespeare. <laughs> well, at least I know there's two people, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth, instead of them being um, uh, 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 a man and a woman. But speaking of men and women, men and women they are slightly different in one way they have different different shaped brains all right okay never remember that little corpus callosum that joins them it's smaller men mm-hmm. it gives us a, an advantage to focus on the hunt and you know get the animal and all that and grab it and kill it and women can multitask look after kids and all that this is just evolutionary <laughs> i know i'm being sexist whoa, but that's whoa. just that's just the way it used I'm to be i'm so glad i'm not living in the 50s anymore Steve. <laughs> yeah <laughs> But Tony is the co-MD here. She oh, doesn't just juggle and look after the babies. She doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> well, you're dead meat if she oh, does. Oh, no, I know. I'm in trouble. Um, 
Interestingly, we now know that there are brain differences with ADHD, and this is a fairly new study. Mm -hmm. They have more white matter and less grey matter. Yeah, right. We spoke about grey matter and white matter before, yeah. right? I mean, the last thing you want is... Yeah, I can see the grey matter coming out there. Yeah. It's not a good thing, right? So you no. want to keep that on the inside. But yeah. what does the grey matter do again for you? The grey, grey matter helps you process information. Right. So uh, keep it simply. The, the white matter is inside the brain more in the middle part, which gives you the more connections and all that between the thought processes. Right. So it's, it's really a little bit unknown how it all works, but we know the grey matter has an effect on um, like, because the cerebral cortex, the outside, mm -hmm. is much more rich in the grey matter. So the grey matter is more about processing thoughts. Right. So ADHD kids have less grey matter and more, more white matter. How can you... Okay, well, what does the white matter do? The white matter transmits information to one part to the other, so it's about forming connections. Right, but the grey matter helps with thought processing. Process. Yeah. Huh. So, so that's, one's like hardware and one's like software almost. Yeah, exactly. That's a pretty good. That's, that's a really good analogy. I wish yeah. I'd thought of it to explain huh. it. Yeah. But that's exactly right. Um, so yeah. so um, if yeah, one's about the processing, one's about getting hey, the info across. One out of 100 every time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's good analogy. Is it 60% of the time I'm right every time, Steve? So, <laughs> Something like that. I think 83% of statistics are made up on the spot. Yeah, right? that's true. <laughs> so, well, that's interesting. So yeah. can, can, you, can you increase the amount of grey matter that you have? Yeah, what not, happens if you have an accident? You lose some grey matter. What do you do then? Well, you do lose grey matter when you have accidents. Yeah. Well, well, how do you replace that? Well, you don't. Oh, neurons struggle to grow back. Now, there's there's emerging evidence that that neurons, which are you know the the important parts of the brain, if I can call it that, they're all important, but they're the thought processing parts of the brain. They do grow back under very very slow and circumstances, but typically they don't. Oh. The body just kind of adapts to it. Like like let's say I've got a broke my arm. I'd still do my daily task with my other arm or I'd do other adaptions. I'd probably use my sling. So that's how the body gets around a brain matter. <laughs> the bells, the bells, <laughs> master. <laughs> this is how you oh, yeah, I, I'm thinking I'm in a sling and I have to grab the – so, so, so you compensate. So, so that's the way you get around that. So, so the classic one is if you have a stroke and part of the brain dies. Okay. So there's no way to replace grey matter that we know of? No, I mean, there's in rats they've done it by giving them high concentrates of, of blueberry, for example. Ah, I've heard blueberries are unbelievable for the brain. Very good for the brain, you know. And, and what about doctor of signatures? What about walnuts, Steve? Uh, walnuts uh, contain uh, fatty acids that help with drain, brain function. Right. But it's um it's it you see there's a difference between function and growing the neurons back. Right. I mean, you know, blueberries really. Isn't well, interesting? it's rat studies. Okay. Um, they they damage part of their brain, and then they give them blueberries and a placebo, or just the food without the blueberries. What is it? Just the anthocyanins, or what? Probably the polio anthocyanins that do uh, help with the brain growing back. But the mechanism is unknown. It's oh. really clever. It may increase BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor, right? Which can increase brain function and numbers. Because you remember some of the other cells, like the dendritic cells, grow back. Right. The glial cells, the glue cells in the brain, yep. grow back. Especially the with system. sleep, we know that. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And you yep. get the lymphatic system. So it, this is, uh, you know, growing them back is very controversial at the moment. Mm. You know, if you opened up a textbook, you'd, you'd probably say, no, neurons don't divide. Yep. They don't undergo mitosis. Mm. So that's sort of, we're at that stage Cutting where- Cutting the science at the moment. We are. Still- ways to forge your head and you know i like to believe steve anything's possible we just yeah. haven't wor worked out how to do it yet we can certainly slow the decrease like you know we're going to talk about exercise a bit later but that certainly does preserve your brain function it's funny Alzheimer's. i was talking with a friend of mine who was going through a bit of depression not so long ago mm. and he went and saw a psychologist just to, his, his mum had had a stroke mm. um he'd been laid off from work oh, just yeah. everything was very bleak right mm. and so he, he went and got some help which is yeah. brilliant and one of the first things that they suggested for him is exercise. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, don't go out and run a marathon. Mm -hmm. Don't go join a gym. Mm -hmm. Get up in the morning mm -hmm. and just go for a nice brisk, brisk walk. Yeah. Every just start with that and then just go from there. And he said, Jeff, within literally a matter of weeks, mm -hmm. he said his disposition had improved significantly. Mm -hmm. And then he got further and further into his exercise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the, the exercise, I don't think can be understated just how important it is for every area of the body, but absolutely, certainly the brain. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about it, how it really affects the brain uh, positively later because in the treatment part, which is the last part, I've got so many papers here. It's incredible that the science on this, but mm. when we get towards the end, we're going to talk about treatments for ADHD and what do we actually do, take home messages. Okay. So yeah, smaller gray matter, which is very interesting. And of course, and this is kind of going to go without saying, but there is a gut microbiome link with ADHD. Yep. Yeah. And it's very interesting because 
we, we, we find that they have more, for example, bifida and bacteria. So bifida is a... Um uh, is that a is that a firmicute or firmicute? A, yeah. It's an absolute so, firmicute. So so things like yogurts and things like that could be negative, Steve. Well, it could be, but this is like an association. Now, normally, bifidum bacteria is not a bad bacteria because it increases no. dopamine. Yeah, which, which is you know the leading thing of you yeah. know a lot of yogurts. Oh, we've got the yeah. bifid bacteria in there, yeah. right? So, so it, it's like it's a, it depends on how your body's going, but they've got too much of it, so they actually increase the production. They actually end up with too much dopamine. The too oh really? Yeah. So is is that why they can concentrate so hard on one thing for yep. such a long period of time? Hyperfixation. We'll get a paper oh. on that. So it's fascinating because, I mean, mm. this is the thing, right? And this is where, and for parents at home listening to this, you give your kids video games. Yeah. And then you, especially the younger they are. Yeah. And then they get really grumpy and stroppy and just nasty. Yeah. Ornery. Like, yeah. You know? And that's because they've used up all of their dopamine. Yep. And, and, the, and it's kind of like the... The fuel that mm-hmm. helps you to laser focused. Because yes. when you're playing a video game, and this is you know one of many things, study or what yeah. have you, the more dopamine that you've got, the yeah. better your focus is, right? Yep. Which also then helps with the reward feelings that you mm-hmm. get as well too. Which it does. Is an addiction in itself. Still. Correct. Yeah. Right? This is where the addiction to video games comes yeah. from. It's like a little drug, which is and and I forget what it is, but and iPads, yeah, Xboxes. Yeah, PlayStations. Atari 2600 in my day. Oh, Steve, really? <laughs> yes. I remember that. They were great. Yeah, the Vic 20. Oh, that was way beyond my time. I, I, like, I, had, a, I had a Commodore 64, 64 and I yeah. thought, man, I saved up for that thing for a year, working oh. at Hungry Jacks. Yes. was never allowed on makeup. wasn't oh. definitely, I had pimples all over my face, wasn't allowed on front <laughs> counter. They stuck me out the back on broiler <laughs> and steamer. Seriously, I was useless. Pathetic. I would have never revived myself as a oh. kid. I was... Talk about useless, like seriously. I was into a cricket umpire for a while. Were you? Yes. At Greg Ritchie's? Uh, Greg Ritchie's. Greg, Greg Ritchie's into a cricket centre. No, oh, no. Okay, the, the, yeah, the, I remember Greg yeah, Ritchie, yeah. 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 Um, that's in Melbourne. I was, and, and it was probably before Greg Ritchie's time. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, well, uh, hang on, Steve. Was, a was cricket young, invented when you were uh, Just, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> the MCG was still, you know, just a field out right. there and, and trees around. Out yeah, there. and there was yeah. the cows. In yeah. the, um, yeah. But, you know, they, absolutely. I mean, you know, they, 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 but, but the whole – um, the cricket thing and the focus thing and, and the dopamine in the brain yeah. allows these kids to focus more. But here's the problem. Yeah. If they don't like what they're focusing on, they'll focus on something else. So if they're sitting on school and someone's teaching them Shakespeare, um, they'll go, ah, stuff this. I'm going to go play my computer game because that gives me the dopamine that I want and they'll hyper-focus on that yeah. and they won't focus on the teacher. Yeah. No, I'll say a normal kid will go, oh, yeah, I'll put up with a teacher for an hour and then I'll go play with Johnny in, you know, handball at, at lunchtime or whatever you do. If he stays at school, wouldn't have a clue. Um, so, um, <laughs> you know, you go and we'll probably play on the phone at lunchtime is what they do nowadays. But yep. but um, that's where the, there's too much uh, dopamine. So the way that the medicine looks at too much dopamine is dopamine converts through to epinephrine and norepinephrine or adrenaline yep. norepinephrine. Yep. So there's a medical way of treating that, of course, and, you know, we, we've talked about the gut microbiome, but a medical way of treating that is to give the kids amphetamines. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love the truth. I know Ritalin, which is one of the brands yep. that they use, yep. is just an amphetamine, right? Okay, so mm-hmm. how, how does it work, Steve? All right. Well, it works by giving the kids, like, uh, a false, like they're exercising. Now, now because an amphetamine peps them up, of course. So you give them amphetamines and it converts dopamine through to adrenaline and noradrenaline. So it detoxifies the excessive dopamine out of the brain because it speeds up that conversion process through okay. to adrenaline. So the science is sound. But yeah. what's what's the piper? Oh, yeah, the piper. Because you've always got to pay yeah. the piper stuff. Well, there's a couple of side effects to medication. One of them is the kids don't grow when they take it. So that's a problem. Really? Yeah. Stunts their growth. By how much does it stunt their growth? Well, while they're on it, it stunts their growth. To what? Um, like not not to zero. While they're on it, yeah. And and what they what they recommend. Because otherwise, you're going to have like you know seven year olds, yeah, you know, eighteen year olds, the size of seven year olds. Well, you would yeah. if, if if you took too much of it and you, for too long a period, it, it it stunts their growth. Because you've got to remember, amphetamines are also used for adults to lose weight, so it stops people eating amphetamines. So it, it, it's to do with <clears throat> them not getting enough calories in, and and the when when you've got you've got two types of sympathetic nervous systems in the body: it's parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic is resting, digesting, and growing. And the sympathetic nervous system is the stress and all that sort of stuff. Mm. If they're taking amphetamines, they're in this category too much of the time, so they don't grow. Mm. So it physically stops their growth. Wow. And so what they recommend, and they they turn they use this term called drug holidays. 
Um, there's the term there. Yeah, I know. Um, what a world we live in. Steve. I know, I know, I know. So drug holidays is when they're not at school, you take them off the amphetamines for the weekends and for school holidays. Now, the problem with that is that their behaviour gets worse. Of course. So, um, and now I'm, I'm not a parent, but thinking from a parent's point of view, you're, you, you give Johnny the drug, Johnny behaves, just keeping it simply, then, you, then holidays come around, you take him off the drug. He's going to run amok because he's not only going to, you know, not be on drag, he's going to be worse if they get a rebound effect. So it's quite scary yeah. for parents because, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's quite – so yeah, it they, they call them drug holidays. So that, that's the main side effect to it, but there are a number of others. Um, the main one is a lack of growth. Um, probably the, the, the other one is the addictive qualities of it. So there is massive addictions with um, amphetamines. You know, who, who would have thought? Yeah, I know. Now, you've got to remember amphetamines were first approved for use in 1937. So they've been around a long time. They also increase the blood pressure or heart rate. Now, often in kids, this is not a massive deal because they're usually... Yeah, much higher than us anyway. But, of course, mm. if they're overweight kids... Yeah. Um, that can well, be if they're on the amphetamines, they're probably going to lose weight too. Yeah. And they also won't sleep. Um, because they get massive sleep disturbances on amphetamines. Oh, well, again, yeah. and that's going to yeah. disrupt their growth cycle anyway. Yeah, and then also they, they develop uh, ticks and what they call myoclonal jerks where, where the kid and, – and you see yeah. them there and they go, yeah, yep. yeah like that. Yeah. And now that's bad in itself, but the worst thing is the kids get teased with that because they're, they're finding that these, these things are quite, quite scary. Now also, of course, we get other um, problems and one of them is seizures. It can worsen seizures. So if a kid has epilepsy or something, it, it, it certainly increases that. So there is some major side effects of that. And also um, um, depression and, and psychotic symptoms. So they get, you know, it's quite a... Psychotic symptoms. Yeah, what psychotic symptoms. That? Yeah, well, you know, yeah, they, uh, they said if symptoms occur, the therapeutic dose of the medication reduce the dose or discontinue the drug. That's the, the treatment if they get psychotic symptoms. All right, Steve, as a percentage, do we know... In America, Australia, England, yeah. what percentage of school children are on amphetamines for ADHD? Oh, absolutely. Um, there would be 4% if it's, you know, let's say 80% of ADHD kids. So it'd be oh, 4% okay. yeah. of kids. And again, they could be on amphetamines for other reasons like hypermorbid obesity. In kids, they give them amphetamines for that. That's a treatment. Uh, so like duramide? Duramide, yeah. yeah. And duramide, of course, puts you in that sympathetic nervous system so you don't want to eat. And, of course, it stimulates your adrenaline release. So yeah. there is another way to stimulate adrenaline release. Go play soccer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or go for a run. Or yeah. go for a bike ride. Yeah, look, I, I think sports for children is just, yeah. I mean, you know what? yeah, I, I think it's absolutely the way it should be. Well, 100%. Get them out, get them active. And it doesn't matter if they're not the world's best. Yeah. Put them in Division 5 team. It doesn't matter. I mean, they meet friends. I know mm. a lot of kids mm. don't like it because yeah. they get, oh, I'm not as good as Johnny or Jemima. Yeah. There we go. We've got to be um, yeah. Yeah, equal. Johnny or Julie. And, and his, his, and this is where it gets a bit tricky. The best sports you put them in are weirdly a competitive sports. Look, life, life is a competition at the end of the yes. day, Steve, and you've got to learn how to compete against others and you've also got to learn to – Work with your teammates, right? I mean, it's. A, I always say to the boys all the time, you know, think sports hard. Yeah. It's just a metaphor for life. It is. Uh, and, and if you want to opt out and live a small life, well, fine, you know, but at the end of the day, I think encouraging children to find something mm. that they enjoy, something mm. that they can get outside, whether it's tennis, whether it's, you know, football or cricket or baseball or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Mm. Um, but so long as they can find something that they can participate in and, and enjoy. And you're going to be a bit controversial now. Um, oh. the, yeah, <laughs> the, this, this is probably not going to go over too well, but the sport needs to give them the child a mild stress. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, so like competition, like I've got to run faster than, you know, not, not like just participate. They've got to actually get adrenaline going. So they've got to be a little bit stressed, you know, not, not put under pressure to – hit the home run or anything, but... But th this is the problem that I see as well too because like, I've coached, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, yeah. football and what have you mm. with the kids' teams and, mm. and a lot of parents have been taught that anything negative is bad. Mm. Oh, my kid's nervous. Oh, mm. well, don't worry. Mm. You know, you don't have to do it and all the rest mm. of it. I think not that they should be shoved out there and you'll do it or you're in mm. trouble, mm. but it should be, no, 
there is no right or wrong out in the field. Yeah. If you make a mistake, that's fine. Yeah. Whether you witness, whether you try, it's how hard you try and, and actually rewarding them for the yeah. effort. And I appreciate that I've always been very against everyone getting a ribbon yeah. for, for, for participating. Mm-hmm. I, I disagree with that. Mm-hmm. But I do believe everybody should be encouraged and and whether they win, lose, play terribly, to play well, mm-hmm. encouraged by their parents, good job, good try, mm-hmm. you did so well, you're getting better. You know, that's the kind of um, endorsement that, that kids should get for, for doing sport yep. because it's not just about being a jock. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, for parents out there that are, you know, highly academic who don't put a lot of value into sports, I understand where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, there are better endeavours and how is sport going to help you to be, you know, a doctor or what have you? Mm-hmm. But it is. Life's about adversity. It's about teamwork. Mm-hmm. It's about it's about pushing yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about not, not accepting the status quo. I mean, as I said, sport's a great metaphor for life and the physiological effects that it have on top of all of the mental mm-hmm. um, is brilliant. Yeah. It helps to keep you lean, mm-hmm. helps you keep you in- entertained, helps to keep you off the iPad and the Xbox, mm-hmm. which kids are doing too much. Screen time. Um, screen time's horrible. So oh, okay. uh, we're going... you need to screen the screen time. <laughs> yes, you do. It's funny. I was looking at a study on screen time and it was on autism, so I didn't put it in here. But a child that spends more than three hours on a screen is highly detrimental to autistic kids. And I can only imagine it would be the same for ADHD kids. I mean, you've got to remember that the, that the treatment that makes them behave or whatever is amphetamines. So we've got to mimic that in a healthy way, and that's where sport can come in because you've got to give them that adrenaline rush. Look, I understand what happens as well too, especially the parents busy all week. Yep. Weekend comes, got kids. Mm. They're begging you to play Xbox mm. or, or, or PlayStation or iPad. Mm. You want to sit down, have a cup of coffee, watch yeah. your own movie. You know? yeah. I, I, I get it. Yeah. But I think you need to create rules around it as well too. I mean, I'd yeah. much rather than play a board game or go out and yeah. play with friends and do yeah. that sort of stuff, which does involve more parenting and more effort, right? Yeah. So, but, but I mean, I'm not saying that eliminate it completely. Like our boys have got set hours that they can go and play it. Mm-hmm. And if we let them go for too long, we know about it. Because that that you know, fortunately, both of them are so into their sport that they are, that's yeah. a natural thing where they're not sitting there bored. Mum, what can I do? Mum, can I do this? Oh yeah, just just go play your Xbox, right? Yeah. Go go play your iPad, and then you don't hear them for four hours. And you, great, I've actually had time to sit down, have a coffee, yeah. do the washing, yeah. you know, do whatever. Yeah. And yeah, you just I, I get it. Well, your kids are great because you know they go play basketball outside. I've seen them; they're they're, they're into it. You know that that's great. They're natural. And well, that, we don't say not because they also bring their Xbox. They, okay, you're allowed. Now on the Xbox, yeah. now you've got to get outside for yeah. now. Right? It's good. It's so, good. And, and if we let them go for too long here, if we, we don't pay attention and all the rest of it during school holidays, mm-hmm. tell you what, they're stroppy little bastards later on. And so you end up paying for it, right? Yeah. We go to bed. <laughs> so, yeah, it's exactly right. But the, if sport is a great way to sort of shape them into something mm-hmm. constructive that's good for them. Yeah. I agree. And and you've got to remember the alternative is with the amphetamines is what, what, what they find is because they sleep, don't sleep well, they put them in, on benzodiazepines at night to help them sleep, and then amphetamines in the morning. Can you see a terrible pattern there? Mm-hmm. Both addictive drugs yeah. and both not ideal. So we also know nutritionally there's there's a lot that can be done. Um, we know that that with kids they have low levels of zinc and iron. Um, these these kids are across the board, they pretty much have or, or almost always have a trend to lower ferritin and lower zinc levels. Mm-hmm. So there are lots of, lots that we can do and um, just going to the diet, what we found was, you know, here, here's a shocker for you. Don't give the kids junk food. That makes ADHD a lot worse. Yeah. And parents report, whether it be refined carbohydrates, sugar, um, preservatives, whatever it is, it's usually found in junk food. Yeah. The ones I'm, I'm interested to know more about is um, preservatives yep. and also artificial colors. Yeah. Um, Steve, th- those seem to be quite interesting in the way that they work um, and interact in the body, specifically with ADHD. Yeah, and and they couldn't really define it because the junk food had all of that in there at once. Sure. So uh, you can't isolate. You, they, they, you know, unless you want to develop a trial where you just give them this colorant. Mm. You know what I mean? And then that would be a bit unethical, I guess. Well, the old old thing was, is, uh, you know, don't yeah. give them red cordial, right? I yeah. mean, that was kind of a bit of a laughing joke. Yeah, yeah, like, of course. Red cordial sends kids crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, there must be something to it, right? I don't actually know what the science is behind it. It'd be interesting to know. Oh, it'd be fascinating to know. I mean, it's really, I mean. It's not just the sugar. And that's what I, mm. no, no, specifically it was the red coloring, right? Mm. So what was it within the red coloring that was setting people off? I'd love to, I mean. There's trials that won't pass ethics, right? Yeah. But let's forget that for a sec. If you gave let's a forget child, ethics for a sec. Forget ethics, and you gave a child a very high dose of red colorant or whatever it is. I mean, it, you know, that's cruel, 
And, you know, but I'd love to see what happens to the brain. I'd love to, to see what happens. Like, I'd really love to. Experience. Yeah, the, From a scientific point of view, yeah, Steve is not a child abuser. No, no, no. no. no but no. We, 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 in physics, when I did my physics degree, we, we had to develop thought experiments. And it was like, you know, for example, um, the, one of the early ones was boiling water on the top of Mount Everest. Um, you know, what temperature would that boil at? Mm. Everyone says, oh, 100 degrees. No, it's way less. Yeah, it's right. less atmospheric pressure. Well, it's like I heard the other day about, about space travel, yeah. is that if you could travel at the speed of light uh, to something, you know, uh, a million years away or yeah. what have you, that when you come back that you would only be like 20, 25,000 years later or something. Like No, no, like, you'd, you'd, be, you'd actually, if you travel at the speed of light, yeah. time stops. Yeah. It stops yeah, at the yeah. speed of light. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's and this is um this is one of the amazing things about physics general relativity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, you're probably more up on Einstein than what I am, Steve. But, oh, he was yeah. around when in 1904 when he did this paper. I was there. You were helping him. Yeah, I was <laughs> helping him with that with the man. You got to carry the two, Albert. Oh no, yeah, yeah, that yeah. was me. Yeah. But yeah, no. I mean, time. To, and you got to remember that that like for example, if everyone's got a phone and you do satellites, yep. And you know the satellites, they have a clock that runs faster. Yeah. Because. It's traveling so fast yeah. that general relativity comes into play. Yeah, they've done it with pilots and all that as well yeah. too. I think there's atomic clops. There's one in Denver, Colorado, and there's another one mm. I think in Greenwich. Yeah. And uh, those are with accurate within like 0.0001%. Mm. But um, they're slightly different because of the elevation. Yep. And so, also the, in, in the 1974, a very famous experiment where they put a clock, I think it was on a Concorde, uh, two atomic clocks, and it actually – was slower when it got to the other end. Yeah, yeah, by like point yeah. whatever of a second, but it does show that there's an impact, right? Yeah. So the faster you go, the slower time goes. Huh. So so that's um yeah, that's well known. But if you're sitting on a photon, which is a, a light particle, then time actually stops. And Einstein in his thought experiment said, okay, he was on a train, he's looking at a clock and he's he's going away from it on the train. The photons are coming slightly slower to him because he's traveling away from the clock if he was traveling away at the speed of light the photons would freeze oh. so the clock would not move and that's where he started so, these experiments so in star wars when the millennium falcon yeah. goes into hyper and the stars kind of go that's actually true well if, if you traveled at the speed of light right, <laughs> right. on the millennium falcon okay, yeah. at the speed of light which yeah, is yeah. the fastest physical things can go yeah. um the stars wouldn't do that because oh. you got to remember the nearest star to Australia is or to to the world is um, Alpha Centauri, which is four and a half light years away. So if you took off there in the Millennium Falcon, it'd take you four and a half years to get there. So it wouldn't go zoom past you. It'd go. Uh, it wouldn't move at all because you know. I'm sorry. That that's a bad plan. It, and that's why the geeks go for Star Trek over. I was just talking to my boys about that. That's why the geeks go for Star Trek over yeah. Star Wars because it's more. Accurate. And that, that's why, um, you know, the Hubble telescope can look back in time because it looks at galaxies that oh, are... Yeah, of course. Well, the stars that we see... Uh, well, that, that Alpha Centauri is four and a half years old, but if you look at a galaxies that are 13 billion light years away, then they're actually um, 13... Dead. Yeah, well, they're 13 billion years old. Yeah, whereas if you actually could miraculously appear there in an instant, it would... They Be may totally be different. Completely different. Yeah. yeah, if the sun just stopped burning, would it take eight minutes? Eight minutes. Yeah, something. Yeah. There. So, yeah. so yeah, so that that's relativity. Gee, glad we talked about general relativity today. Oh, it's important. Yeah, of course. It's, it's relative, I thought. Well, another thing that's relative to ADHD. <laughs> you talked about exotherapy. Another one that I found was very interesting was unique trans fatty acid profile in children with attention deficit disorder. I think there's a massive opportunity for treating um, all brain. Uh, dysfunctions with fatty acids. Yes, I think it's one of the it's the dry oily structures in the brain. Yep. I, I think it is is I don't know, Steve, a significant factor, mm. and I think probably a base level of health for the brain yep. is making sure that you're getting enough omegas for sure, yes. but other things as well too. And yes. certainly, 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 um, omega three. Yeah. But but but. Steve, you know, I'm theorizing here. You've got the information. No, it's true. Okay. Uh, and this was only published um, the fifth of November, 2021, which is like you know. Three weeks ago. Yeah. And I found that they have much higher levels of trans fatty acids in their red blood cells. Wow. So ADHD, can, now, now trans fatty acids are bad fats. Yeah. They're the. You can get them in packets of crisps and yeah. junk food. And yeah. Too. It's got lots of trans. Yeah. So it goes back to what I said earlier about getting kids off the junk food. But now we know in this study that was published three weeks ago that they have definitely higher levels of trans fats. 
and that's awful. So um, that's bad for your heart and everything, but it's yep. bad for ADH. So you got to remember that when trans, if you think of a cell membrane of a of a brain cell, say a neuron, for for, for chemicals to get through that that membrane has to be quite fluid, which is full of DHA or decosic acid, acid or fish oil. Um, and so, Not if just, it, actually, fish oil is crap, Steve. Yeah, it's the the good oils in the brain. Yes, because most fish oils that you buy at the shop, yeah, rancid. They are so, because you, if you buy it as DHA, mm-hmm. which is a very unstable, super unsaturated fatty acids, mm. it can be, can get a lot of free radical damage. So look for other f- sources of omegas from yep. your food, yep. um, you know, and, and other things Fucking. like that. And there are even supplements out there that are made, you know, for omegas without fish oil, Steve. Correct. Yeah. And you can make your own fish oils. Yeah. The EPA, DHA. That, that's right. Made. If you're getting fresh fish, great. Yeah. And that's probably one of the best things yep. you can get eat. And even your biochemistry in your body, get a get a, a healthy uh, ve- ve- vegan central fatty acid mix. Oh, then- omegas are amazing. Nuts are amazing. Yep. I mean, these things should definitely be part of your staple diet. Sunflower seeds are fantastic as well, yeah. too, Steve. Yeah. And, and, Walnuts. I mean, yep. we spoke about them before. And kids are not eating all that stuff. They're eating chips. And What's chips. really funny is the fact that with children in their lunchbox, because yeah. I, I looked at this the other day, you're not allowed nuts. So oh. all your nuts and bars and your seeds because of the anaphylaxis. Right, mm. so so kids are kids, you, so they can't take the nuts, which right. not only was an unbelievable source of like zinc and, mm. and things like that, but also um, fatty acids, but also protein. Yeah, of course. If you look at a kid's lunchbox now, there's virtually no protein. They're allowed bread and chips, but not allowed nuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's the only protein I reckon. If you looked at your lunchbox, it'll be interesting for parents out there. Look at your kid's lunchbox. Have a look how much protein's in there. Mm. You probably get a little bit if they eat ham, but if they're not. I, I reckon they're getting virtually none. I used to have peanut butter sandwiches as a kid. You're not allowed peanut butter. <laughs> well, that was many years ago, of course. <laughs> but but I mean, yeah, right. So so I mean, it, it's weird that kids are eating more of this junk food, and we do know that kids with ADHD do tend to eat a worse diet, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And and the trans fatty acid study shows yeah, that. Yeah, because I guess it, it sort of almost has a. Um, uh, it's like when you eat something. Calming, like you give them mm. here's a packet of chips, here's yeah. an ice cream, keeps them happy, keeps yep. them quiet for a second, and then you pay the piper. It's like video games, keeps yeah. them quiet for a second, but you pay the piper later mm. on, right? Yeah, mm. yeah, I, incredible. Um, basically, um, magnesium and B6, they're very low. And in one study, they gave 40 children um, six milligrams per kilogram per day, which is not a high dose for kids. So let's of say magnesium, yeah, magnesium mm-hmm. uh, for eight weeks. And almost all the ADHD children showed an improvement in clinical symptoms, namely hyperactivity, hypermotivity, aggressiveness, and inattention. Um, wow. And then they stopped it, and clinical symptoms returned a few weeks after the treatment stopped. Wow! So that's a that's reading. So that's just one example that if you give a forty kilogram um, child, I'm just making that up, six fours are, are two hundred and forty milligrams. See, yeah. I went, I did maths, uh, and that's good, not see. that's not a very much. Like that. That's that's like a couple of magnesium tablets a day. Yep. And magnesium. And magnesium high food, Steve. What's high in magnesium? Yeah, greens and nuts. Nuts, yeah. <laughs> Leafy greens, of course. Uh, fish like salmon is very good too. Yep. And it's very good for your brain as well. So it's all the health foods with all the magnesium. Yep. Green leafies, of but course. Again, you can vegetables. imagine as well too. Kids aren't yeah. eating nuts. They they don't like their greens. Yeah. Again, especially ADHD kids where you just like just eat it and shut up, right? Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. You know, I just don't want another fight. So, yeah. just, you know, you give them the food that they like to eat because you don't want the fight. Yeah. It's, it's again, it's self-perpetuating. Absolutely. Um, amino acids like acetylcarnitine is very good, glycine, L-theanine. And is that because it crosses the blood-brain barrier? It does. And and when, when you acetylize something across the blood-brain barrier. Yeah. So how does that help with the ADHD symptoms? Um, is it because what, it helps to transport nutrients into the brain? Yeah, exactly. And it, it therefore it helps with the, it reduces impulsiv- impulsivity in this particular study. Okay. So it's very good. Alethionine calms I mean, and, you down. And if they're overweight, acetyl l actually may be beneficial. Great, yeah. So. And, and you got to remember, for, for the average child, let, let's put it in clinic, if you wanted to give them that, you could give them a scoop of that and then, okay, Johnny, before school, go out and kick the soccer ball for 20 minutes or 30 minutes, get some exercise, burn some calories off, burn some of that energy up before you go to school. And that helps the brain as well, helps them lose weight, helps everything. So it's just terrific. Yeah. Um, of course, L-tyrosine is very good too, which is surprising because I would have thought that that could exacerbate ADHD, but it doesn't. It seems to work. And taurine is very good for the brain as well. Mm. So these amino acids are very Tor- good. Besides the heart, I think taurine is the second most abundant amino acid found in the, in the, in the brain. It's extraordinarily high in the brain. Yeah. And, and we yeah, know that- Most in the heart and then secondly in the brain. Is that yeah, right? very much so. so. Yeah, but the, it, it's very high. And it's also in animal protein foods, taurine. Right. So and kids struggle to make taurine. Right. In fact, infants can't make taurine. So if 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 an ADHD kid is on a 
vegan or vegetarian diet, yeah. where should they get their taurine from, Steve? Oh, they have that supplementation. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you want them to get them from fish or, or those sorts of things mm. with the omegas and that sort of thing. But mm. if they're vegan, absolutely, taurine is, is terrific to supplement. Mm. Uh, and you can get it. It's a pretty cheap supplement. So so uh, you, you correctly point out um, amino acids, which is proteins. And so kids must have an, a protein-rich diet because that covers all these proteins. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's quite important. So, again, nuts and seeds, specifically if they're yep. on a vegan or a vegetarian-based diet, nuts and seeds are going to be huge. Yeah. Huge. Uh, a couple other highlights, and there's lots of, lots of chemicals here. There's some that are banned in Australia, so I won't mention those. But melatonin is very good for kids that can't sleep with ADHD. Right. Okay. And that's showing clinical improvement yep. too. Okay. So polyphenols are also very good as well too. Of course. Yeah, yep. they're very good for the gut as well. Now, there's a couple of other risk factors for kids, um, and, and this one – of course, is a bit of a controversial one, but it's published in the papers. It says early life antibiotic use and risk of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, it increases it. In the kids or in the mother? In the kids. So, and again, we're talking about the gut flora. Yep. Destroys so, gut flora. So again, That's restoring gut flora is, yep. is going to be important. There's so much research going into this area. We've yep. got obviously the prebiotics. Yep. We've got the um, uh, probiotics. Yep. We've got postbiotics. Mm-hmm. We've got modbiotics. Yep. We've got all these different things. And I know it can be really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. This is if you're actually working with a naturopath or an integrated health doctor who mm-hmm. understands the gut. Yes. We're working with, um, we're doing some studies right now, and we will be working with practitioners mm-hmm. to actually develop a range of, of products to help um, in this area. We love gut health. Gut mm-hmm. health is a passion, Steve, mm-hmm. for, for us. Love it. Um, it's something that we came out a while ago to sort of really help to understand and forge new pathways forward. There is so much in the gut, mm-hmm. and I think people are starting to really understand the importance of getting the gut into the right balance. Yeah, um, absolutely. Where you've got overgrowth, where you've got imbalances, those things, if they can be addressed, quality of life for everyone's going to improve. Exactly. And and you've got to remember with ADHD, the, the take-home message here is, there is a genetic component, yeah. But the, all these lifestyle things that we've talked about is really because you, you can't change the genes, no. but you can change the expression of the genes. You bathe them in a, 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 a milieu of good health, which is exercise, healthy diets, special supplements if needed, getting the gut right, getting their, their stress levels down, getting them into sort of like a, a healthy sport. Um, all these things go a long way to dampen down those those yeah. symptoms. And again, coming back to it, and I know that we've said it before, but for mm-hmm. those people who are just tuning into this podcast, mm-hmm. when you exercise, specifically if you're doing high levels of aerobic mm-hmm. um, exercise, anaerobic exercise, your body, you produce carbon, which feeds the good bacteria mm-hmm. in your gut. So when you exercise, again, getting into a healthy weight mm-hmm. is not necessarily just about burning off the calories. Mm-hmm. It's actually about the physiological changes that happen in your, in your, in your gut through feeding the, um, the bacteria doides, which typically in the West are mm. underrepresented yeah. in the gut, especially in overweight people. They've got too many fir- firmicutes. Yep. So by exercising, you get multiple ways to improve your body composition mm-hmm. One is obviously through burning excess calories, Mm -hmm. but the second one is the change of the gut through producing the carbon mucus that the good bacteria feeds on. Mm -hmm. And I know that we've sort of spoken about it, but it's hard to, for some people, they're like, don't quite get it. Exercise is brilliant for that. Yes. Exactly, and 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 it's brilliant for lots of things. So so get the kids into exercise, get them on a healthy diet, get them into those sort of supplements. Um, and, and this is where you're going to make that huge difference in that child's life to give them more because, because, you know, they are going to be genetically prone to this disease pretty much all their life, even into adulthood. So it's a tricky one. Um, but, but I, I think by, by covering off on those things, what we've talked about, um, and be careful of long-term amphetamine use. Steve, we're running out of time. Yeah. So you've got a couple more papers, anything of, of oh, burning desire. There, there is, there is some hypothetical links here between inflammation and stress and anxiety and ADHD. So maybe if there's something that you can't, like there's, you've tried to listen and you don't know what's going on, check inflammation levels. Now you can check that with a blood test with a child, you're measuring CRP, or you can look for any sort of inflammatory response going on in the body. That can drive ADHD C-reactive as well. C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein, yeah. So, so explain those really quick, Steve. Sure. C-reactive protein is a protein released by the liver when the body's under inflammation, and inflammation is driven by interleukin-6 in the body. Yeah. So interleukin-6 innovates the liver to make this protein called C-reactive protein, and that's a measure of inflammation in the body. Right. So it's a good, simple blood test. 
And so if the child, you've, you've tried all this sort of stuff and you just don't know what's going on, check for inflammation. Yeah. And that can be driven by gut dysbiosis or an infection in the body, long-term infection or something else that drives ADHD. You see, just every, every which way we look at this, when you come back to it in terms of health and wellness and, and well-being, mm. the gut's at the centre of oh, yeah. which, we, which we know. Um, but it comes back to those basic things. Mm. Eat well, mm. eat fresh, eat local. Mm-hmm. Exercise. Yep. Get good quality water. Mm-hmm. Get um, nice down stress time. Laugh at movies. Mm. Go out with the family. Hug one another. Mm. Um, what is that? Um, when you hug uh, for a period of ten, t- t- Steve. Oxytocin. Oxytocin. Yeah. Uh, oxytocin. I mean, we're talking about yeah. drugs here, and, and we're reliant on pharmaceuticals to treat our illnesses and our woes. When actually. Nature knows best. It does. Nature knows. We, we, and there's so many things that you can do. And look, it's not an overnight cure, but if mm-hmm. you're practicing them all the time, um, they can make a huge impact on your life. Absolutely it can. And, and I think it's worth a try. I mean, kids deserve that. And, and you know, and in my day, we used to ride our bike to school. It was about 5Ks, and that was exercise. And then when after school, we'd play bike tiggy, which got your adrenaline up. Yeah. I don't know if they still do that anymore. Probably not. But you know, you just get. You it's funny. I six. saw a kid riding a bike to school the other day, and I was just—I just about fell off my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's really but, funny. But it's, but, not, but it's, it's strange, right? It's I mean, strange. like you just don't. I mean, I, I remember the bike racks at school yeah. when I was going to school. They were like, "Where am I going to put my damn yeah, bike?" And like, ba- bikes were over in trees, and yeah. like, now it's like there's a kid riding a bike to school. It's, Bad parent. He's going to get kidnapped. It's right? different. Like, it's, it's so different. And I, and I, I understand our kids. We drive our kids to school, mind you, yeah. it's nearly an hour away. But um, exercise. And then mm. a lot of these things, we, we, we're losing out. Too much yeah. screen time, not mm. enough sport, uh, too much indoors, you know. Uh, and hugging oxytocin. Mm. 30 seconds, Steve, I think it takes. It was only 30 seconds, yeah. Only 30 seconds? That's yeah. a long hug. I, mean, oh, I don't know about you, you Steve, but I, mean, I do other one. things that don't take 30 seconds, right? So, <laughs> like, in terms of. <laughs> like buttering my toast and yeah, stuff, you know. So, but yeah, Takes thirty seconds. I mean, hopefully, thirty second hugs turns into something else. Yeah, you know hope, I mean? yeah. You? But yeah. I'm married, so oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, no, yeah. I got it once last year. That's yeah, it. but um, I think if you if you if you hugging, <laughs> yeah, that's buttered toast. But, um, yeah, if you <laughs> you can butter my toast, Steve. Um, but if if you <laughs> if you hug somebody, yeah. you're releasing oxytocin, absolutely right, and, and that's what we need. We more yeah. need more, and the more skin. That you get the yeah. better. Yep. So you know, let's do it. Hug and eat well. Take off that shirt. Full body hug. Oh Steve. yeah. Okay. Don't think I'd even uh, do that with a wife. Maybe after the podcast. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Super. But it is true. <laughs> I'm making light, but yeah, it is yeah. True, no, right? yeah like true. a good hug is 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 good. Yeah, nothing better. A merry heart does good like medicine as well too. You know, Absolutely. laughing, having fun, time out, oh, de stress. Yeah. Hug your kids. Well, look at our podcast on laughter and medicine. It's so much it's so much research on that. It's not just flipping hearsay. It's really good medicine. Mm. No, it's great stuff. Anyway, Steve, yep. we've run out of time. We have. Always fun. Yep. Always educational. I hope you learned something about the um, Maltese Falcon, no, the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know. Learn a little Millennium bit more Falcon. about Shakespeare. Yep. Oh, Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. It's an AFAC before me. Oh. You know, so Dead Poet Society's got some good stuff on there. I'm sure that's in there. I'm sure that's Macbeth or something. It I, is. I have yeah, no yeah. idea. But anyway, guys, thank you so much. All right. And we'll be back with some more next week. See you next week. Adios, amigos. Bye. Bye. I've got sunshine on on the cloudy cloudy day When it's it's cold outside I've got the month of May I guess you'd say What can make me feel this way?